Meteor Maker arrives on the PS5 and this one it's promising gruesome first person action with community led creativity, but can these two concepts come together? Well me and Luke we've spent a good 5 or so hours on it and we wanted to take you through our initial impressions. Thanks to the publishers for the review copy today, my name's Alex so this is PlayStation Corner, let's get started. If you enjoy the video today consider subscribing and liking this video, it helps the channel a huge amount. So the story this far it has been relatively minimal and I do imagine it is going to be staying that way. We are the custodian of the Chimera, a living experiment created to save a life on earth. Now we are battling it out across multiple locations to gather up resources and continue its evolution process. Alongside this we can also build out our own outpost to generate further resources, but do be warned players they can raid this and steal those resources for their own progression. Definitely sets the stage for all how to break loose and that really is all I expected. Meteor Maker then comes from the same team behind Dead by Daylight and for a game that relies on community support that instantly gives me faith that we will see the team continue to evolve it. You know they have made mistakes in DBD as a long term player but they've also showed complete commitment. This one it's of the first person shooter variety and I'd instantly describe it as old school because the controls are just simple and it's fast paced. Basically we can shoot, we can use secondary items such as grenades, we can sit wire around the world with a brief moment to support mid-air before it does disconnect and then we can also hover jump as well. We also have a melee attack which has been my primary attack style this far into the experience. Instantly it's unique because resources here are scarce, your opening gun in fact only has two bullets and should you want to reload you must go ahead and pick this ammo up from the foes or the traps that you did take out. I've been playing in both single player and two player co-op and they are incredibly different experiences because all enemies here they can one hit kill you so I have found when playing solo I'm taking things much slower because obviously there's no chance at a revival unless I have a specific item. In co-op you can be riskier as long as you're taking advantage or at least taking a strategic approach to that character placement and ensuring there's a good opportunity ahead of you for a revival should things go wrong. The latter is for sure my favourite way to play this far, it's just a lot of fun strategizing an approach together and figuring out character builds that do complement each other. Our priority here was Luke on ranged attacks with a weapon that had a further reach for enemies, while I had heavier equipment that could take out traps but definitely required me to be up close and personal. One thing that is essential to success initially is understanding the variety of materials because each ties to characters at the hub location where you can upgrade your character weapons, secondary weapons, traps and defensive forces for building. In this world though expect to be dying a lot and one of the main reasons I'm not really comfortable with dropping a full review at this point is the fact we were playing before it was really fully live to the general public. You know all of this content in here it is community created so I really want to see where they take things. All of these maps as well it is packing across content so it means no matter the platform you can share your builds with others. Fortunately though, as I said, thanks to the beta and no doubt the internal team as well, we had plenty of maps to explore and so far we could face a normal, hard and even brutal difficulty levels. The gameplay loop and idea I should add here is simple, we run in to grab a sample of the resource we need to boost the chimera and then must simply escape by getting back to the entrance and entering the desert landscape. Once we do grab this resource however, the structure it can change entirely and new enemies and traps can spawn, I've seen it to the point where pretty much the entire building changes around you, it can basically be brutal and it seems people are getting incredibly creative with placement, we died so many times due to this but you know a game is good fun when you instantly load in again for another attempt. Enemies have come in a few forms this far, basic foot soldiers, those that fly, armoured heavies that require strategic hits or even multiple hits at that and then a fair few that seem to have more rocket launchers than an entire army. You'll also occasionally face champions, the best of the best and these proved to be soul destroying at moments as we kept strategizing and kept getting caught off guards. 
I'm not much of a builder than myself personally, but early into the game you will be able to buy a plot of land to build and I will say it is intuitive. Much like the experience itself, you're going to be doing most of this in first person and the game packs a handy tutorial that does a good job of getting you through the process. I do enjoy the element here of thinking about how others are going to approach your map, your location and basically what can you do to trick them out because in turn, I do think that's going to make you a better and more aware player. All the traps and enemies then, like your character, they can be modified and further reinforced beyond their starting stats. Outside of that really, this game like DBD, it's all about the repetition, leveling up, unlocking new items, developing the arsenal, even switching out your character armor. That was my first stop for example personally because the next armor suit up, it had a faster sprint motion. That's really useful when you factor in some of the traps you can expect ahead of you. You think, you know, deadly spikes, bouncing bombs, hooks that pull you in, turrets, fake floors to send you into a death pit, glowing blocks that will kill you instantly, arrows, flamethrowers and that really is just the beginning. The only issue I would say so far, the only real issue I would kind of identify this far five hours in is it's not got much in the way of variety. What you are doing in the opening of moments rarely changes outside of the occasional new trap or enemy type. I hope as we do level up it's able to maybe evolve beyond that kind of basic loop in some way. Additionally I'm a little concerned about the community aspect of this. We hit mostly good maps but a few were simply too easy or then even there were big open rooms with tons of enemies and these were just essentially kill boxes and they wasn't all that fun to try and overcome. I do see the game at least has a voting system though following each run so I hope they evolve this to ensure the rotation and maps we do see are strong because it's really going to be essential to the audience's enjoyment. This feedback as well I do think it should be shared with players as well as you are heading into a map what did others think before you. So overall in the early hours expect your initial firepower to be underwhelming and expect to rely on melee but when it all comes together you can feel like a badass sipping all over the place, navigating quick jumps and escaping by the skin of your teeth. It's definitely done enough to hook me and I'm for sure coming back but I really am curious now to see what it becomes in 6, 12, 18 months because this is a fantastic starting point that is for sure and I'm sure this team has more than a few surprises planned for us in the future. Graphically then I do like it, gives me an air of old school quake, especially the enemies but they pack some great animations, the locations can be large in scale, it's also relatively easy to navigate the different menus and the hub location. They got a great balance here as well with traps in particular, they blend into the world but they never feel unfair on the player which is about as good as it can get given the fact you know it's one of the central themes of gameplay here. Where it does suffer for me visually personally, it is a little repetitive at the moment. Sure, it's post-apocalyptic, I get it, but every location looks identical. The enemies are also very similar and it's always that same at desert location. I am really hoping in the future skins for locations can become, you know, a little bit more exciting and less a single style. Audio finally, also strong work, guns have a nice variety, the enemies in your death sound particularly gruesome, the music is mostly forgettable but it does a good enough job of reinforcing the location and that battle ahead. Would love to see the music maybe get a little more dynamic with what's occurring on screen, you know think upbeat for battles, tension for exploring, but I do understand this may not be fireball given the fact it is all community built. So at this point I do think Meet Your Maker is worth a look, it's a creative spin on the first person shooter genre and I think so far I'm enjoying the exploration and the trap spotting more than anything else, it's just something fresh, it's exciting and there's a huge level of reward when you do finally succeed. We had one map which was absolutely slaughtering us, I had maybe 40 deaths but the payoff of succeeding finally was absolutely worth the wait. So will you be checking out Meet Your Maker? Let us know in the comments. With that, hit subscribe, join us here for PS5 and PSVR 2 reviews and deals weekly, and I'll see you all on the next video. Thanks everyone.